North Korea is a state party to the Convention of the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women and the Convention of the Rights of the Child. We will analyze the human rights situations of women and children in North Korea with a focus on the statements made by North Korea in its report submitted by the CEDAW and the CRC in 2016. North Korea incorporated the definition of discrimination set forth by the CEDAW by enacting the law on the protection and promotion of the rights of women in 2010 and withdrew its reservations to the CEDAW in 2015, although North Korea has had a positive attitude. The human rights situation of women in North Korea is still poor. North Korea has emphasized that it has actively dealt with removing gender role stereotypes, boosting awareness of gender equality and reinforcing educational campaigns, administration, as well as legislative measures with the Women's Union of North Korea at its center. However, due to the discrimination against women that is still prevalent in various areas like education and employment, women are still limited in social advancement due to the stereotypes at home and in society. The number of women participating as political delegates is very low. In a survey conducted by Interparliamentary Union, that compared to the ratio of female delegates in various countries, women only accounted for 16.3% of the 13th Supreme People's Assembly. Out of the 191 countries investigated, North Korea was ranked 113th. The ratio of female delegates holding core positions in the ruling Workers' Party of Korea is also very low, and this proportion diminishes even further when getting closer to the core powers of authority. Despite the increase of economic activity of women in the informal sector, the patriarchal aspect of North Korean society and the family life being still centered on the men as the head of the household increase the burden on women. Even if women take responsibility as breadwinners of the family through economic activities at the market or other informal sectors, they are also accountable for the housework. Furthermore, women must participate in the labor mobilization of the Women's Union of North Korea with respect to their inminban. In 2011, North Korea prohibited domestic violence with the law on the protection and promotion of the rights of women. However, North Korean women still have no protection from such acts. <laughs> Even when reports are made to the authorities, victims will be faced with responses that family issues should be handled within the family. It has caused victims to avoid reporting to the authorities. The same is true for violence in society, when crimes like sexual violence occur. North Koreans are skeptical about the possibility that the victim will be protected and that the assailant will receive punishment. There have been testimonies that the victims of sexual violence do not report the incident due to society's perception of them. Due to North Korea's strict limitations on the freedom of movement across borders, women are often forced to resort to organized human trafficking when they try to cross national borders. The punishment after repatriation is very severe. Among the human rights violations against women, forcing repatriated pregnant women to have an abortion is the biggest problem. Another serious problem is the inhumane treatment of women, especially during the investigation process and when they are held at the detention facilities. The protection of women's health and maternal health care is also in a poor state. In a nutrition survey conducted on North Korean women, the results show that one out of three women suffer from anemia and the seriousness of the nutritional status. Although North Korea claims that an organized health care system has been established, the care for prenatal, pregnancy, and postpartum is still inadequate.
North Korea as a state party to the CRC has implemented its obligations concerning children, at least from the legislative perspective, including the enactment of the law on protection of the rights of children. In 2014, the optional protocol of the CRC regarding the sale of children, child prostitution, and child pornography was ratified. However, the human rights situation of the children in North Korea is still very poor. Even though North Korea has stated that the organization of special classes and normal schools as well as the establishment of special schools for the visually and hearing impaired, it is difficult to verify if they are operating properly. Moreover, the fact that there are only 11 special schools for the disabled indicate that there is an absolute lack of special schools. There are many cases where children suffering from illnesses are unable to receive the proper treatment due to a failing medical supply system as a result of North Korea's economic crisis. Although it was reported that the state of nutrition among North Korean children has been somewhat improved, the 2014 WFP survey showed that one out of three children under five and almost half of the number of children between 12 and 23 months suffer from anemia. North Korea stated that free meals are provided to all children at nurseries and kindergartens. However, according to the testimony of a North Korean defector, free meals have been stopped since 2000, and the burdens regarding the cost of running the nurseries and kindergartens have been shifted to the parents. The most important aspect of school education in North Korea is the political ideology education which focuses on idolizing the supreme leader and his family. North Korean students are also mobilized for various political events or propaganda purposes. Furthermore, North Korea still enforces mandatory military training on the students. In senior secondary schools, the second year students must receive military training for a week at a field training camp for the Red Youth Protective Guard and the third year students spend a week at the outdoor camping sites to receive basic military training. North Korean students are mobilized to supplement the lacking labor force. In addition to the officially designated school curricula, students are frequently mobilized after school or during class. These mobilizations cause many students to suffer from significant physical hardships. In North Korea, there are children living on the street who are known as Bukjebis. Although North Korea has stated that these children are provided with good living conditions, people have still witnessed a great number of Gokjebis. Moreover, the poor conditions of the facilities and environment as well as the overwhelming harsh discipline have caused many children to run away from the accommodations. 아침 7시 반이면 산에 보내면 다 가게 아무거나 먹을 것을 주소 오라고 그때는 가을이니까 나 나가서 감사히 사고 주소 없거든 근데 이 어린 애기들 같은 거는 하나, 하나도 못 줘가지고 들어옵니다 그런 아들은 또 보니까 밥이 없을 거다 마다 형편 없습니다 Children who have been repatriated from China to date are known to have experienced various forms of cruel treatment such as verbal and physical abuse during the interrogation process and have suffered from harsh labor as well as starvation during detention. However, there have also been many testimonies claiming that repatriated children were released after receiving education. <laughs> There is a need to observe how cases of repatriated children are dealt. Although North Korea has responded actively to the international community's call for improvement of human rights for women and children in the report, the human rights situation of women and children still appears to be inadequate. North Korea shall take all appropriate measures to ensure the rights set forth in the CEDAW and the CRC.
The Korean government and the international community need to make an effort to improve the human rights of women and children in North Korea.